Find the equivalent resistance between the terminals A and B in the given resistor network. To solve this problem, we need to simplify the resistor network by combining resistors that are connected in series or parallel step by step until we're left with a single equivalent resistance, R equivalent, between points A and B. Why do we do this? Well, reducing a complex circuit into a single equivalent resistor helps us analyze voltage, current, and power more easily. And here's the key. That final resistor must behave exactly like the original network in terms of how it responds to current and voltage at the terminals. At first glance, this circuit might look like a tangled mess, almost like spaghetti wires. The crossing resistors, especially the 6 ohms and 12 ohms ones, can really throw you off and make it seem more complex than it actually is. But here's where the magic happens. Take a moment to really study the connections, not just the layout. You'll notice that the 3 ohms, 6 ohms, 12 ohms, and 4 ohms resistors all connect to the same central node. We'll call that node B. Now let's label the other junctions as C and D to help track connections more clearly. Now I'm going to make a few key changes to help you see what's really going on beneath the surface. Take a close look at this 6 ohm resistor. It appears to cross over the 12 ohm one, creating the illusion of complexity. But in reality, it's simply connected between nodes B and C. That's all. So if we unplug it and redraw it like this, still keeping it between B and C, we haven't changed the circuit's electrical behavior at all. We've just tidied up the visual mess. The same logic applies to the 12 ohm resistor, which connects B to D. We can reposition it within the diagram as long as those connection points remain the same. And here's the crucial insight. A circuit's layout doesn't determine its function. Its connections do. Once we preserve those connections and clean up the drawing, the whole structure suddenly becomes clear. What once looked like a messy tangle now reveals a clear layout of series and parallel connections perfectly ready for step-by-step -step simplification. Our strategy is straightforward. Identify series and parallel resistor pairs and simplify them one step at a time. So let's dive into the circuit and start looking for easy wins. Right off the bat, we spot a clear series combination, one ohm and five ohm resistors connected end to end with no branches in between. That's the hallmark of a series connection. And the rule is simple, just add their resistances. So, 1 plus 5 gives us 6 ohms. We replace those two with a single 6 ohm resistor, instantly streamlining the circuit and bringing us one step closer to finding the total resistance between points A and B. At this stage, we don't spot any more resistors in series, but look a little closer, and a new opportunity jumps out. The 6 ohm resistor we just created is now in parallel with both a 4 ohm and a 12 ohm resistor. Time to shift gears and bring out the reciprocal rule for parallel resistors. Since 12 is a common multiple, the math works out smoothly. We calculate the equivalent resistance for all three in parallel, and the result is a clean, simple two ohms. Just like that, we've replaced a messy trio with a single, tidy resistor. Let's redraw the circuit once more and appreciate how much cleaner it's becoming with each simplification. Now we're back to a nice straightforward case. Two resistors in series, one ohm and two ohms. No tricks here, just a simple addition. Combine them and you get three ohms. So we swap out those two resistors for a single three ohm one. With that done, it's time to redraw the circuit again. It's really starting to slim down and take a much more manageable form. At this point, there aren't any more resistors in series, but another parallel combo is ready for action. The 3 ohm resistor we just created now sits in parallel with a 6 ohm and another 3 ohm resistor. Time to shift gears again and apply the reciprocal rule. With 6 as a common multiple, the calculation flows smoothly. Combine all three and we get a tidy equivalent resistance of 1.2 ohms. Just like that, what looked like a bit of a jumble becomes a single clean resistor. Let's redraw the circuit once more and enjoy how dramatically simpler it's become. Step by step, we're almost there. Now our circuit has boiled down to its simplest form, just two resistors in series, a 10 ohm and a 1.2 ohm. Add them together and we get a total equivalent resistance of 11.2 ohms. And that's it. This is our final 
fully simplified circuit. So instead of dealing with that entire original resistor network, we can replace it all with a single 11.2 ohm resistor and the circuit will behave exactly the same. Same voltage, same current, just a lot easier to work with. So there you have it. Even though the circuit looked complex at first, we tackled it step by step, simplifying as we went. And that's the key takeaway. No matter how tangled a circuit may seem, with patience and a bit of strategy, you can always break it down into something simple and manageable.